Hello and good morning. Welcome to the Urban Assembly Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why the Q&A button is so important. You can use that to direct questions to a specific school or schools by including the name of the school with your question. Or you can leave a question for all of our admissions representatives to answer about their institutions. They really want to share a lot of great info with you today, and that Q&A button is a great way to personalize it. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening for Urban Assembly students in this virtual college fair. We hope you have signed up for the additional sessions this morning. And this presentation is being recorded, like all of the presentations. They're going to be available within about a week at that same website where you registered, strivescan.com slash urban assembly. So we hope that you'll be able to watch this again, share it with family and friends, and also check out more great schools. All right, we have six awesome schools joining us today. We're going to be hearing from SUNY Oneonta, Hamilton College, Carleton College, Gutman Community College, Damon College, and Syracuse University. So let's get started. We're going to be hearing now from SUNY Oneonta. So oh, give me a thumbs up and let me know if you can see the power. Perfect, perfect. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Zachary Frangus. I'm one of the undergraduate admissions counselors at SUNY Oneonta. Um, so I'm here to talk a little bit to give you some more information about Oneonta in general. Um, so I'm just going to show a quick PowerPoint presentation, and it kind of takes us through um, all of that general information that you guys are wondering about. So let's just jump right in. If you haven't heard about Oneonta before, we are a one of the 64 SUNY schools. So we were founded as a teacher's college and we're one of the four year liberal arts schools. We're located about three and a half hours outside of New York City. Um, so we are right in that comfort zone for a lot of students. We're right in the middle of Albany and Bankton. And you're about an hour and 15 minutes from the capital, about an hour and a half from Bankton. So those are the two biggest cities. When you think of Oneonta, you think of a different environment. You think of a rural area, a small town with a population of only about 14,000 people within the town of Oneonta. However, we have 6,000 students on our campus. So we are considered that medium-sized college. Um, and then there's a small private school straight across the campus from us. So really you have over 8,000 students living in this um, small town during the academic year. So it's really that true going away college experience. Um, we have over 57 academic majors to choose from. We are a fully residential campus, meaning that you are required to live on campus your first two years, um, but we do freeze your room rate in at the same price for all four years. Um, you're looking at an average class size about 21 with a 17 to one student faculty ratio. Um, so that tells you that we really keep those classes small and intimate. So our faculty know all of our students on a first name basis. There's a lot to get involved with on campus as well. Um, be, you know, although we keep those classes small, with that medium-sized college, we have over 150 clubs and organizations to get involved with, um, 21 varsity sports. In addition to that, we have 21 Greek organizations. Um, being part of that small community, we're very big on giving back to community service. So as a whole, our students completed over 50,000 hours of community service. We have a lot of different resources on campus to help every type of student as well. One of our main resources is our Center for Multicultural um, Experiences. So students refer to this as a CME building. And this is in our student center, which recently just went under renovation and reopened this spring. Um, and this is a place that really is a resource and advocate for our traditional unrepresented population of students on campus. And in addition to that, we have a gender and sexuality resource center to get involved with that provides education throughout the campus to both students, faculty and staff as well by doing different programs throughout the year. Um, we have the safe space and gender inclusive living um, within our housing and our resident halls as well. Um, as I mentioned before, we are a fully residential campus. So we have 15 resident halls altogether. Five of those are designated to our first year students. Um, your room rate, again, is freeze no matter what type of room you have after that first year. Typically, this is what a typical first year will look like. Um, it's either a double or a triple that we place you in. All students carry an un, 
um, limited dining plan on campus as well. In addition to that, we give you $315 worth of declining dollars that can be used at local restaurants, Starbucks on campus, and other um, local eateries within town that accept it. These are all of the majors that we offer. In addition to our majors, you'll see pre-professional cooperative programs. 25% of our class do come in as an undecided major. So they're not sure what they wanna do, which is okay, because no matter what major you come in as, you are required to have a liberal arts background. Our top five most enrolled majors currently at the institution um, is psychology, education, biology, business economics, which is one of our 10 nationally accredited programs and our music industry program. Some new majors that we've added over the few years is our women and gender studies, our sport management, and our exercise science. Um, most of your majors do require that you have do some type of um, hands-on learning experience, such as like an internship, independent study, or research opportunity as well within the program. We have a couple of different applications and a couple of different ways to apply to get into Oneonta. The first one that I like to talk about is our early action application. Um, the middle 50% that was accepted over the past years is anywhere from about an 87 to a 93 GPA with about a 1070 to 1200 SAT or 21 to 25 ACT. Now keep in mind, these are just averages. So we did accept below and above that at the same time. So what early action does is it gives you priority consideration into the institution and you're guaranteed a decision by January 5th of your senior year. Early action is not the binding decision, so don't get it confused with early decision. We don't offer that application. Um, the main thing to note that if you apply early action, we do give you until the end of December to complete that application. You just must apply and pay for the application fee by that November 15th of your senior year. But say that you're waiting on another SAT or another letter of recommendation, that's okay. You would just shoot us an email. We would give you till the end of December to complete that and still be considered. If you're applying general decision, um, I do wanna note that we do have a deadline to be considered for scholarships. So about $5.8 million were awarded in scholarship money last year. Oops, sorry about that. Let me go back to that. Um, $5.8 million were awarded in scholarship money last year. So there's no additional application. We would automatically consider you for any scholarship opportunity when you apply into the institution. You just wanna make sure that you have that application on file no later than January 15th of your senior year if you're applying for even general decision. Um, how it will work is we do send out all early action decisions and then we won't start reviewing general decision until mid-January. Um, our application is rolling, so we do keep it open. Um, so until we meet that enrollment goal or finish up that incoming class. As well as you just wanna make sure that you complete your financial aid applications that open up October 1st. I know that that was a lot of information in a quick six minutes, but I um, share my contact information real quick on the screen for everyone if you want to take a picture and I can pass it. I'll be in the Q&A if you wanna drop a question in there and I'll pass it off to the next school. Thank you so much, Zachary, for sharing and sending you on to this morning and starting us off too as the first presenter. All right, we're going to be learning next about Hamilton College. Morning, everyone. So my name is Joanne Pluff. I am one of the admission officers here at Hamilton. Super excited to chat with all of you. Um, it is a beautiful 65 degrees here today. So if you're not familiar with the weather, we have the best of all four seasons on campus and we love it. So um, I'll give you a good introduction and then um, I'll also leave you with my contact information in case you have any questions for me after. So just a little bit about Hamilton. We were founded in 1973 and officially chartered in 1812 as an official college. Here on campus, we have just under 2,000 students. So it is a small community, um, but we love it. It's such a robust community of students who are very curious, and it's a diverse community. We are about four hours from every major city. So from New York City, where you are Zooming in today, we're about four hours from there four hours from Boston and four also from Toronto. But the closest cities to us, um, we're about 45 minutes from the city of Syracuse and about 15, 10, 15 minutes from um, the small city of Utica. So if you're looking for that city life, know that you can access it. We offer bachelor's of arts degrees. We are a liberal arts college. Um, and here on campus, our student to faculty ratio is nine to one. So typically you'll be in classes of fewer than 19 students, which is awesome, which definitely adds to that small community field. 
One of the great things about Hamilton is the open curriculum. Um, I think as a student, we oftentimes don't know what we want to study. So here in Hamilton, first of all, you're not required. You aren't able to um, select a major until sophomore year. So those first two years you'll use to explore all of the different areas of study. And we have about 52. So if you have a secret desire to be a hip hop artist, know that we have dance courses for that. Or if you're into production, we have courses for that. If you're really into biology and are looking to go to medical school, know that we also have programs that will support you on that journey. About 60% of our students will study abroad at some point. Um, students can study abroad up to three semesters, and it's completely up to the student as well as their career advisor in the study abroad office. One of the great things about our campus is the access to internships. Um, each student is given a career advisor that will help you find an internship at some point in your college career. So 95% of our students are doing some type of external internship. They can be done on your study abroad. They can also be done in some of our domestic opportunities that could take you into New York City, Boston, as well as Washington, D.C. In the past year, we gave over $500,000 to support our students on research and internship opportunities. Every Hamilton student is required to complete a senior project, which is super exciting. Right now on campus, we're getting a lot of campus emails about the students' projects and those the seniors who are gearing up for next year um, who are working on their project. Each project is very different. Um, so for an economics student, it could be um, like a study of sports statistics, or for a dance major, it could be a dance. Um, our writing students have been doing poetry, so it really is um, kind of a choose your own adventure and typically it becomes a passion project for our students because they typically pick things that they're very excited about. 97% of our students report that they're gainfully employed after graduation or enrolled in graduate school or some type of fellowship. So our students are very successful. On campus, we uh, require our students to live on campus for all four years, so we're 100% residential, and we have a ton of different styles of housing to offer. Um, one of my favorites that comes to mind is the co-op, which will provide students with the opportunity to, it's, uh, I would say, the most informal, but more formal as well. So the students are able to cook for themselves. Um, the dining hall will deliver one meal a day, and then they, as a community, will eat together, and they'll do all of their cleaning. So it's a little bit more of um, responsibility for students, but it's one of the most interesting, I feel, um, living opportunities. First year students are in doubles, triples, or quads, and they are located all across campus. We have over 200 clubs and organizations on campus. So as a student who is from the Caribbean, one of my favorite to talk about is the Caribbean Association. Those students are excellent. They are always cooking great food. We also have a pickling club, which is one of the older clubs on campus. I actually just got some assistance from them for pickling some mangoes. Uh, but like I said, there are over 200 that range from interest-based, major, and just ones that want to have fun. We have Division Three athletics um, that play in the NASCAC League. And if you're not looking for a varsity commitment, know that we have club and international, our intramural sports as well. There are also quite a few supports for international students. So if you're a student that's not from here and you're looking for some additional support, know that we also have that. Here in Hamilton, we are 100% need blind and will meet 100% need for applicants. So we don't have any merit scholarship. Everything is only financially based. Um, our application process is more of a holistic view, meaning we'll look at every single thing that you submit to us. So if you submit five letters of recommendation, we'll read all of them. We will read your essay. We will look at every single thing on your list of extracurriculars and know that everything that you do is important to us. If you're a student that was not able to participate in any type of volunteering or, you know, maybe you have some home commitments, please list those on your application as those, like I said, are really important to us. We accept the Common App, the, the Coalition application, as well as the Quest for it application. And for students who are interested in the HEOP program, we do have an HEOP program and its sister program, Hamilton Scholars. Um, and you're not required to do any additional applications for the Hamilton Scholar program or HEOP. Um, if you're interested in figuring out um, how you would fall in our class of applicants, every year we update the class profile, which is listed on the web. Typically for a student who's applying for HEOP, we're looking for around a 1200 SAT um, and a 31 ACT. All set?
Yeah, I was saying, I'm sorry, I was just wondering, I was going to ask if you had another one more slide or any contact info, if you're all good, Joanne. That's Perfect. it, it's my contact info. And wanted to make sure everyone could get a hold of that. So um, thank you so much for sharing Hamilton with all of us today. And before we move on to our next school, I do want to say we've had a lot of newcomers popping in. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. We've heard from two great schools. And don't worry, this whole session's recorded, so you'll be able to catch up with anything you've missed uh, thus far in about a week's time at that same website where you registered. I'll give more information on that later. But I do want to let you know about the Q&A box. So definitely be sure to open that Q&A button and think of any questions that you have for these schools. You can address it to a specific school by including the name of the school if you want to know something very specific from any of our representatives, or you can leave a general question for everyone to weigh in on. All of our um, awesome admissions professionals today are excited to not just do their presentation, but personalize it a little bit by answering your questions. All right, so we're moving on to school three, and that'll be Carleton College. Hi, everyone. Just, uh, can, audio's good. Visual's good. We got a screen. Okay, thumbs up. I've been doing this enough. I just want to make sure. How's everyone doing today? Um, I know I'm the middle show here, uh, but fortuitously, I'm just after Hamilton alphabetically here, and we're a lot alike. So I'll try and consolidate some of what I have to say. Um, I am uh, Director of Admissions at Carleton. I've been here for 10 years, and I've been coming to New York for all 10 of those years. And so uh, if you want to reach out and say hello, please do. I am likely familiar with your counselors and uh, schools. So um, as I move this slide along, I will give you a few facts about Carleton that I think are helpful. First of all, we're located in Minnesota, which feels like it's the other side of the world, I know, but actually it's a two hour flight from New York. I do it quite often. And we're located just outside of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis. And uh, I am actually presenting from Minneapolis where I live right now, but Carleton is located in the town of Northfield, 45 minutes south of here, a uh, town of 20,000 people with two liberal arts colleges in it. It's a total of uh, 5,000 undergrads in a town of 20,000 people. It feels pretty academic and pretty fun. Everyone lives on campus and we are a fully residential liberal arts college, uh, uh, liberal arts and sciences college, I suppose. 2,000 students total enrollment. The numbers you see here actually reflect this year's COVID number. So we have been fully open all year. Year. Uh, I would uh, add that a third of our students identify as BIPOC, and at present, 10% of the students on campus are international. Uh, our most diverse cohorts have been coming in recent years, and our current first year uh, cohort on campus is actually 38% BIPOC, though only 9% international because of visa troubles. Um, we work really hard to live up to the expectation of being a predominantly white institution historically, uh, and that means sort of finding ways to own the uh, opportunities we have to diversify and prepare our cohorts for um, a future in which, frankly, uh, the workforce and working world will be much more diverse than it used to be. It's been a, a, a serious challenge, but a really rewarding challenge for us as an institution. Uh, if you want to know some of the things that I think are helpful to know about Carleton to differentiate it, I would just start with this slide, right? We are set up on an academic trimester calendar, which kind of happens in some high schools, but is pretty uncommon in um, many college or university formats. That means you take three classes at a time only, and you have three equal size grading periods per year, uh, only 10 weeks long. So Carlton makes a really explicit deal with you, um, you know, juggle less, only three classes, but you're gonna cover about a semester's worth of material in only 10 weeks. So Carlton feels fast and focused. Uh, the good news is that we're really small and excellent at sort of helping students navigate this space. You'll be put in situations to succeed all over campus here. Our classes are small. All classes are taught by full professors. There are no TAs here. Um, we are fully residentials talked about earlier. And from that trimester comes all the things that you would like in a college experience, I think. One of those is it's really easy to study off campus, even if you've never thought of that before. We'll send you around the world. It's not obvious to think of Minnesota as a gateway to the world, but I got to tell you, it's harder to find a better deal than we have set up here. We will subsidize your trips wherever you want to go, and you can go anytime from the end of your first year through your senior year. Uh, I'd also add that it's really easy to find times to take the class you want to take when you want to take it. Um, you're not sort of forced to take classes to graduate in four years. Um, and that makes it easy for us to accept students who don't really know what they want to study yet. We have a soft spot for those students. A full 40% of our students are very undecided when they arrive. And like Hamilton, we won't let you declare a major until the end of your second year. So um, we've got some opportunities to sort of help you figure out what you might be good at and what you might really enjoy doing with the rest of your life. We, we take pride in that part of it. 
52% uh, of our students are also in um, heavy quantitative STEM fields. We have an outsized reputation in this space. Many of our students go on to become doctors and PhDs in these fields. And we have really strong um, gender equity work in those spaces as well. So um, we're proud of the stuff we do here. Uh, I'd also say that because we're in Minnesota and just outside the metro, we actually have the gift of space. We have a very large arboretum on the edge of our campus uh, with 15 miles of green trails through it. This is an autumn shot right here. It's just incredibly easy to center yourself. Uh, if you're a person who likes to take walks after, um, I don't know, practice or a uh, particularly rigorous exam or something like that, it's really easy to reconnect to the landscape around you. And I think uh, we sort of set that up pretty easily here on campus, literally walk right out the door and right into these spaces, all while being on campus. Uh, no surprise, that plays right into our sustainability reputation. This is a campus that is uh, in the act of going fully carbon neutral here, meaning operationally we will generate no carbon uh, in uh, into the landscape, including commutes and stuff like that. I'm in some really interesting meetings related to this right now. So if you want to live in harmony with your landscape, I think we've got a lot of things working in our favor right now. I would offer this up. Uh, we are uh, free to apply to and we'll take any one of these application platforms. Uh, I, we're a proud and longstanding member of QuestBridge. As an association, it's a fantastic way to find your way to a college that can surprisingly meet all of your needs uh, for a really affordable or no price as it works out. Uh, we're also a, a need-based only financial institution, meaning we don't have merit-based scholarships. Whatever financial aid you qualify for will come based on your family's need. Uh, and we meet that need 100%. So we take that really seriously uh, and it's part of our job uh, as an institution. If you got other questions, feel free to sign up for our mailing list. This uh, fancy little URL will bring you right over to a form. You can fill it out and get set and ready to go. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll be in the chat. Feel free to find me um, if and when you got questions. Good luck to all you and happy spring. Thank you so much, Adam, for sharing Carlton today. All right, the next floor we're going to move on to is Gutman Community College. All right. Hey, thank you, everybody, for having me this uh, this morning on this beautiful day that uh, we're experiencing right now. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to go ahead and share my screen a little bit. Um, and whoops, this. Oh, sorry, technical difficulties. Give me one more second. I'll Perfect. Here we I'll, go. I'll help confirm and make sure everything looks set. Yes. Yes. So. Oh, um, so. Again, thank you everybody for, for having me uh, this morning. Um, again, you know, sorry about the technical difficulties, but just to give you some basic information about Gutman Community College, right? So I represent Gutman Community College. I'm the admissions manager here at the school. Um, Gutman is actually part of the City University of New York family. We are actually the newest community college in the family. We've just opened our doors um, in September, 2012 to our first incoming class. So we are actually the newest community college in the system. We are actually by far the smallest community college in the uh, in the city university of New York family and so part of that you know is um, intentional because what we want to do we, we sort of um, pride ourselves in our ability to and in our um, mission to prepare our students for the very next steps you know for whatever that may be right and that and a lot of that starts off with the transition from high school to college and so everything that we do is very intentional um, by providing a lot of support but also providing a, um, a very rigid structure for a lot of our students so one of the big things you know about the school because we are so small is our limited number of majors so you see the different majors right there we have the business administration human services information technology urban studies and the liberal arts and science you know so those majors are very much um, umbrella majors to help you prepare for the next step um, very much to prepare whether it be jumping into the workforce or into you know um, the senior colleges for um, possible further um, <clears throat> further advancement um, so one of the big things about the school is actually our location, right? We're located right in the heart of Manhattan, right by Bryant Park. Literally, Bryant Park is right across the street from us. Um, and so we're also close to a lot of the major different subway lines. So getting to the school, we are a 100% um, commuter institution. So, you know, all of our students are traveling um, from the five boroughs. We also have some students coming in from Long Island, some from New Jersey. We even have some students coming in from upstate who are taking Metro North down. So being where we are, being uh, located right in the heart of everything, we are pretty close to all the different major subway um, and mass transit um, lines. So, you know, it is, rel it is really, really easy to get to the campus as well. Um, and so part of, you know, um, our uniqueness, part of our newness, we've been able to be very innovative 
in a lot of what we do in the preparation. And so because of that, we've been honored um, as being, you know, as having been recognized as the best community college within New York um, State and also, you know, a couple of times uh, as the best community, best public community college in the nation, as you can see um, on here. Like I said, we are actually one of the um, smallest institutions with only with just about a thousand students under our roof. The next college up um, is going to be Medgar Evers College, which is located in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, with about six thousand. So we are by far um, tiny. And so, you know, one of the things I talked about was um, our pride in preparation, but also in support. And so, you see a couple of different, um, you know. Um, couple of different offices here that will work with our students in one way, shape or form. Our peer mentoring program, which is um, within, which actually is uh, part of every single aspect of a student's journey through government community college, whether it be, you know, starting from the admissions, through their academics while they're in uh, government, and then even after they leave us as they transition into some of the four-year institutions as well. One of our uh, big things, one of our bigger, um, more involved offices is our Center for Career Preparation and Partnerships, which will actually work with our students to find internships, possible job opportunities, you know, whatever that, whatever the next step for our students will be, whether it be, you know, going into a senior college or possibly looking into um, possible career paths, right? So they'll help our students with that. Um, <clears throat> advisement is also huge. So from the very beginning, students are very, are working very, very closely with their academic advisors in the first year with their student success advocate, who is very much there to give them the tools to become a successful student, whether it be time management um, skills, test taking strategies, stuff like that. Um, and then once they move into their second year where they jumping into their courses of study, their majors, the goal actually shifts a little bit so that students are then looking at, where do I wanna go after I graduate from government? Do I wanna work right after I graduate from government? Do I wanna do both? And you know, our um, career strategist will help with uh, that search. You know whether it be you know the job opportunities or the or they're looking for the um, the senior colleges for students to transfer into right and they're there working in partnership with our uh, center for career uh, career um, partnerships office um <clears throat> like i said you know we're a part of the city university of new york so our tuition is actually relatively low you know um baseline tuition for us for the entire for an entire year is about 5200 including fees you know, students who, um, at the school, for the most part, I would say about 70% of our students re will receive some form of financial aid in one way, shape or form. Many of our students are essentially fully covered because of our low tuition and because they do qualify for the full amount from both federal Pell and then also New York State TAP, which is kind of neat, right? Um, <clears throat> admissions requirements, right? In order to be admitted to the school, Gutman Community College, we are, like I said, we are um, a two-year community college within the City University of New York. So admissions criteria, minimum academic requirements to be admitted, students have to graduate from high school. That's really it. We don't look at SATs. We don't look at ACTs. Um, as long as you're on track to graduate, you are academically eligible to be admitted. But because we operate so very differently than a lot of the other schools do, we do ask that all of our students complete three separate steps in order to be um, considered for the school. One, put us on the application, information session, individual meeting, really just to learn about the school, who we are, what we are, and whether or not we're a good fit for you, not the other way around. If you do have questions, um, this is our information right here. This is my colleagues and myself in the admissions office. Feel free to email us or call us. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Michael, for sharing Gutman with all of us today. All right, we've heard from four great schools, two to go. We're, it's awesome seeing some Q&A questions coming in. We hope that more of our attendees will think of uh, some questions to ask, so don't forget that's there. All right, I'm now going to turn it over uh, for us to learn about Damon College. Can you guys see the screen? Yeah, looks great. Okay, perfect. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Giovanni Jimenez. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Damon. Damon is located in Amherst, New York, which is right outside of Buffalo, New York. So it's a suburban campus. It's a small campus and it's very quaint. However, if you guys are looking for the city life, it is a 10 minute drive to downtown Buffalo. It's a three minute drive to the border of the city as well. So you guys will get the best of both worlds. Um, 
93% of our students will receive financial aid. I have every single one of my accepted students receive a merit-based scholarship, which is based on your academic criteria. So those range from 7,000 to 12,500. Again, that's based upon the criteria you provide in your application on your transcript, resume, et cetera. I have 1,700 undergraduate students and 900 graduate students. So again, we're a very small campus. The student to faculty ratio is 12 to 1, and the average class size is 15. I like to say that your biggest class will probably get up to 30 students, and that's most likely going to be in your freshman year when every freshman has to take the same types of classes. We have over 70 student organizations, and if I'm being honest, they're continuing to add more and more and more because students like to create their own clubs. We just added a Dungeons and Dragons club, so all it takes to create a club is have two people at least to be a part of the club and a faculty advisor. We are a Division II school. We have about 17 athletic teams. Um, I do recommend if you guys are interested in playing at the Division II level, you start to reach out to the coach as well as your counselor earlier on so you can go through the process. Um, how to apply. So I am on the Common application as well as the Damon application. I always tell every student, only use the Damon application if you're only going to apply to Damon. If you're going to apply to more than one school, which is pretty much the norm these days, you would use the Common app and that would make the process go very easy. So other schools have mentioned what they have. I have early decision and regular decision. Um, we do not have early action. Um, something I want to tell you guys is definitely reach out to every school you're talking to because every school has different guidelines. So for me, I don't have early action, but I have early decision. Other schools will tell you early decision is binding for them. For us, it is not binding. The only thing is you do have to commit within December if you're going to accept early decision. It says right here, priority deadline by November 20th. Um, it's a suggested date. That's not a harsh deadline. It's a suggested date. I always suggest that you apply by November. I think that timeline is a very smooth timeline. You get everything in before the holiday season. You get to enjoy the holiday season, focus on getting your financial aid packages, touring schools, getting your accept letters, and then enjoying the rest of your senior year and just making your final decision. Um, what it takes to have an application. I need a personal essay, a high school transcript, one letter of recommendation, and my SAT or ACTs are optional, as well as the resume. However, my tip is resume, I always suggest sending it. That is a difference of a scholarship or two. SAT, ACT, I do not need it. However, I always like to challenge you guys to take it. Um, send it in. It's always another aspect of your application that could benefit you. Um, and even if it doesn't benefit you, I can still go about it. So it doesn't hurt you to send it. Okay, going back into the Damon scholarships, like I said, merit-based scholarships range from 7,000 to 12,500, and they are renewable every year. Now this is getting a little bit into the finances. So um, most likely if you guys would be attending Damon, you guys are all the way out in the city. So you guys would be dorming. So if you would see this be the final cost, don't let that scare you because that is not what you're gonna pay automatically. We are going to be subtracting your merit base that you will receive and as well, the rest of your financial aid that you receive. Um, and if you guys are interested in the HEOP program, that would be reduced a lot significantly as well. Um, for housing, I have Canavan Hall is for my freshmen. It is suite style living. So you would share one room with one other person or two people because there's two rooms. One has two people, the other has three people. The five of you would share one bathroom. So there is no communal bath. That's only for your um, first year. Your second, third and fourth year, you would move to the apartments. You would get a bedroom to yourself. There are two bathrooms, so you only share a bathroom with one other person. You share the full kitchen and the living space with um, the other three students. Freshmen are required to get the 19 meal plan, so that means you have 19 swipes for the whole week and they renew every week. Um, as you get older, you can decrease to the 14 or 10. There is laundry on every single floor in the um, freshman hall as well as the apartments. Um, and it is coin free. So the only thing you have to provide is your laundry detergent and your dryer sheets. So again, going into the division two um, sports, these are all the sports I have here. Um, for division two, there is requirements. So you obviously have to go fill the questionnaire out at damonwildcats.com. You then would have to submit your SAT, unfortunately for the sports and 
you then have to reach out to the coach as well. Um, and I always say you have to let us know in the admissions office because sometimes I have students always say like, I haven't heard back from the coach yet. And that's because I never knew. So the coach did not, not know to reach out to you as well. So we have a bunch of majors. I will show you that last slide with all the majors, but the biggest majors I have here are gonna be the physician's assistant, nursing and PT. And those three majors have a different requirements for acceptance. So you can see the requirements here for the PA, which is the highest. And then PT, it'll be an 88 or higher with a 1080 SAT, PT, and nursing. And then these are all the other majors that I offer here that you guys can look at. Um, app, app admissions requirements, I need a minimum of an 80. And if you're going to submit the SAT, a 98, 980 minimum. And then finally, here is my phone, my text line, and my email. Awesome. Thank you, Giovanni, for sharing all of that, Damon, with us today. All right, we're on to school number six of the six by six, and we'll be hearing from Syracuse University. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, great. Uh, my name is Bobby Mason. I am an assistant director of admissions with Syracuse University. Um, so just to begin, Syracuse University is a private research one institution. We are located in Syracuse, New York. Um, this is just a small snapshot of our campus. Um, it does kind of extend beyond the frame you see here. We have about 15,000 undergraduate students and then anywhere from five to 7,000 graduate students. So we are considered medium sized. Um, just a little bit about where we're located. So um, I always like to emphasize while you can see in this picture, it's a little bit uh, rural uh, beyond our uh, campus, you are just outside of the city. We're about 10 minutes away. And so there's not only a lot to do on our campus, but also within the city of Syracuse in terms of entertainment at museums, theaters, restaurants as well. Um, and the city really serves as an extension to the classroom for our students. They can do internships with local businesses, we have four hospitals nearby, so those of you interested in the health or medical professions, you can certainly do clinical internships there. To get to campus from New York City, it's about four and a half hours by car, but you can also take the bus, train, or you can fly. Um, we have students who are coming from all over the world, so it's really accessible. Aside from our main campus, we also have centers in New York City, Los Angeles, as well as Washington, D.C., and then also centers abroad. So you can even take your studies um, elsewhere. In terms of the academic offerings at Syracuse, we have a number of options. We have 200 majors and 100 minors, and those are housed in 10 undergraduate colleges and schools. So when you apply to Syracuse, um, you Certainly want to do some more research beyond today to kind of determine what school is the best fit based on your academic interests and goals. Um, but you will be housed in a specific college. So it starts to feel much smaller. Um, that 15,000 number is a little less overwhelming. You'll get to know your peers as well as your faculty members. We were founded as a liberal arts institution. So those are housed in our College of Arts and Sciences and Maxwell School. And then all the other programs do have an element of liberal arts uh, incorporated into the curriculum. But you can see we have a range of options. Some of them are nationally ranked and listed on the right-hand panel. Um, but you know we have talent-based programs in architecture, college visual performing arts. We have business in our Whitman School as well as um, communications. So, our students really kind of take advantage of all these offerings. They can take classes across the different colleges and schools, add minors, um, but you will have support as you're na navigating all of these um, options. So an academic advisor will be assigned to you based on your home college or school. And then each college and school also has a career service center. And so they'll get students thinking about how, uh, what they wanna do in the future and what they're learning about, how that relates to um, a future career or goal, or perhaps it's graduate school that they want to pursue. All of our programs really emphasize the experiential learning. It might look a little bit different. Our aerospace engineers will use a flight simulator. Our acting students will act along professional actors, um, but all students have the opportunity to do research on our campus. It's not only faculty members and graduate students, but our undergraduates can begin doing so as early as freshman year, and the source is a resource on our campus that you know provides grants to students who want to engage in those um, activities. Uh, 
Um, some of our students will take their studies uh, outside of Syracuse and to another country. Um, and so we have a lot of opportunities for students who want to do so. We have our five centers that are run by Syracuse faculty and staff, and then we have 60 partner programs. So you can go to Italy, you can go to Asia, you can go to South America, and you can even begin your Syracuse education abroad through our discovery programs. Um, bringing it back to campus though, if you do decide to stay, um, you have a robust community of peers to learn from and connect with, and there's so many different ways to get involved on our campus. We have over 300 clubs and organization. They span from club and intramural sports to social justice clubs to cooking clubs. Um, and we do have our division one athletic teams and that certainly adds to the school spirit that Syracuse is very much known for. Um, in addition to living on campus, uh, we really wanna make sure our students feel supported. So we have some uh, new buildings and centers available, one being the Barn Center, which is basically a one-stop shop for everything related to health and wellness. Our Shine Student Center was recently renovated and now our three cultural centers are there in um, a shared space called the Intercultural Collective. They include our Office of Multicultural Affairs, LGBT Resource Center, and our Disability Culture Center. So they do celebrations, trainings, and do have some mentoring programs, um, even for some of our first generation students. So in terms of the application process and how you might join our Orange community. We are exclusively on the common application. We have just two decision plans, early decision, which is binding, and then the regular, we do not offer uh, early action. Um, again, you do need to uh, specify which college or school within the university you're applying to, and you can list up to two options. Um, we do a holistic review process. So we're looking at every single material that we request. We are test optional for fall 2022, and I just like to note that you can do an interview if that's something you're interested in. Um, so if you have questions, I'll put my info in the chat. Here's our general information, but thank you so much and go Orange. Thank you so much, Bobby, for presenting on Syracuse today. All right, we've heard from six great schools, and um, I hope everyone's learned a lot and is even more curious to explore these great places after today, because this six minutes is just a small sneak peek. We can't, we can't cover everything, and there's so much more to learn and explore. We hope this is a great start. Uh, we do have a few more minutes together, so quickly, uh, I'd like to do one live Q&A question to make sure that our attendees have time to get contact information out of the chat for follow-up or to last, ask any last Q&A questions. So I'd like to invite each representative to come back live on camera, and we're going to answer one question together. So I'd love to hear from each of you about a favorite campus event, program, tradition. Um, it could be academic and in the classroom or out of the classroom related. Uh, that is just a little extra sneak peek into your campus and your community spirit for your students. So we're going to go in the exact same order that you presented. So we're going to start with um, Zachary and Suni Onianta. Thank you for being number one again. And uh, we'll just flow through all of you one through six. As the representative ahead of you finishes, just turn on your microphone and answer away. Great. My favorite event or tradition on campus, I'd have to say it's called Walk Through the Pillars. So we have two pillars that sit in the front of our campus. I mean, it's from the first building that was built. And as a freshman class, when you all move in after orientation on that Sunday evening, we do a big ceremony and you all gather on the one side of the pillars and walk onto campus as one. And it's our way of welcoming you into our um, community as well. And then four years later, when you go to graduate, you gather again and then walk through the pillars and go up the hill as if you're leaving campus. Um, so that's one of my favorite traditions that we host. One of my favorite traditions on campus um, is actually the Citrus Bowl. So it's a hockey game that takes place um, at the ice rink on campus and the students sneak oranges and all sorts of citrus and throw them <laughs> at the hockey on the rink. Um, I know it's not one of the, I would say the VP's favorites, but I think it's hysterical because they sneak it in and every year they figure out a way to do it. So I really appreciate it. Made me laugh, Joanne. Uh, yeah, uh, I will just offer up at Carlton. I think uh, a really meaningful tradition is every Friday, it's called Friday Flowers, uh, where students have the capacity to uh, get really cheaply subsidized flowers by our student senate and give them to each other. It's one of those things that I didn't really believe in until I actually saw it on campus and realized that like everybody gives it around, even people you didn't think would be in the flower exchange business are all in on this every Friday. And it just sort of leads people into the weekend in the right frame of mind, I think. 
Um, so Gutman, we are relatively new. We are, um, so we don't have like any longstanding traditions like, like the ones that we've heard, which is um, probably unfortunate for, for us, but we'll probably develop them as we go along. But one of my favorite things is that every semester we do host um, a, a like an open mic for all of our students. And so this is our way for our students to, to perform in front of each other, in front of a very supportive environment. And so we have students who are singing, spoken word, dance, any sort of performance. And it really just gets the community together um, you know, from both first year and second year students, so which is amazing. So at Damon, we have a bunch of traditions. Unfortunately for myself, I have not been able to experience them because I started during this pandemic, so we haven't had them. Um, but we do do TGIF every Friday. So one of our um, numerous organizations will host TGIF over in the Wildcat Den, which is a nice little app Applebee's area, and they'll host something. So they kind of either it's always free something, free food, free t-shirts, free games, free activities, and college students love free, and I'm not even a college student, and I love free, so you'll catch me there all the time. I'm going to share more of like a traditional event, but we have something called Orange Central Weekend. It's basically our homecoming, but combined with reunion, so it's exciting because not only can current students come together and, you know, go to the football game and bond, but also alumni come back and they connect with different clubs and professors. So um, it's really an exciting weekend and really captures that you know, sense of spirit and pride. Um, and I can't wait till we're able to do it in person again. I love all these answers because they're just fun, unique, uh, little sneak peeks into student life um, on campus. And uh, I hope that our attendees are thinking, oh my gosh, I could see myself participating in whatever the event tradition or program um, is, you know, that's a nice sign. If you, you know, go on social media, check it out, look at past pictures or things have been shared and think, can I see myself there? Um, that's a good uh, hint that you might want to check out that school more. All right, well, we have reached the end of our time together. First, I want to say thank you to all of our representatives for not just sharing those facts and figures um, in the college uh, search process and about your school, but just the passion, the energy, the excitement you have for the opportunities in and out of the classroom for your students at such great schools. I'd like to thank everyone who attended, all the guidance counselors, students, for being here. Um, we hope that you've learned more and this is helping you along that journey. All right, now we are at the logistics part of saying goodbye. So when you close your window, there's gonna be a link to a very quick four question survey. Trust me, students, it's really short. We would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, again, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted for Urban Assembly students. We hope you've signed up for more. You still can. Um, so please head to strivescan.com slash urban assembly and attend the upcoming two rounds that are next. And in about a week's time, you'll find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at that same registration website. So you can watch it again, share with family and friends and check out new schools. Again, strivescan.com slash urban assembly. Thanks again, everyone, for taking time out of your day. We hope that this was a fun way to kick off or encourage you in your college search process. I know it can get overwhelming, but there's so many fun um, adventures ahead for you as you decide where life's going to take you after high school. So thanks again, everyone, and have a great day.